Okay, praise God. All right, so welcome everyone. It is October 15th and we are celebrating First Fruits for the month of Chesfon. Uh, we've, we've got here together our Signs and Seasons team, Rachel Wilkins, Deborah Taylor, and myself, Laura Judah. I would like to welcome you in. Um, we've got so much to discuss. We've got such exciting things to look at with the eclipse that happened yesterday and um, what God has been saying about that, along with a host of other things. So let's um, open it up with the shofar blast and get going. Okay. I'm going to do the, the blast and, and say a little prayer. Yeah, we didn't hear anything with that, but I heard uh, somebody say that it's possible that you're too close to the microphone, which is completely contrary to what I would thought. Thanks, so How's that? Nope, still didn't hear it. About four or five feet back. <laughs> Okay, so Lord, we thank you that the blast was heard by in the spirit realm, that the angels and anybody in the spirit realm heard that. Yes. So, um, and you heard that, and the atmosphere is clear. And we just ask you to um, join us, that you will um, speak through us, that your our lips will utter those things that you want them want want us to say and discuss, and that you will enlighten our minds. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to just uh, do a quick review of where we've been. We just have come out of the fall feast season um, in the month of Tishri, the seventh month. Uh, so this is the eighth month of Chesban. It is um, the month of the alphabet letter Nun, which symbolizes the Messiah and also has a numerical value of 50. So we're continuing on this theme of Jubilee and Liberty. And it is the month of the tribe of Manasseh, um, which means his name Manasseh means to forget or to leap up and leap away. So that indicates that we're Again, coming out of a, a season, we're leaping out of things of our past and into the things of the new. And with it being the eighth month, that signifies a new beginning. So uh, that is, that's a whole bunch of good stuff right there. But to make it even more exciting, uh, we want to also look at this eclipse that happened yesterday. And so we're we're going to kind of change up our order. Usually we don't talk about the constellations until a little bit later in the broadcast, but we really are feeling like God has a very significant message that he wants to share with us at this time. So we're going to first look at the constellation, and then we're going to talk about the eclipse. Deb, why don't you open us up with a discussion of, uh, start the discussion on the constellation. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share a picture of where the sun is. I actually took this of the sky about an hour ago. So it's very fresh. This is actually what the sky looks like today. Can you all see that picture of Virgo? Yes. Um, I did turn Virgo Virgo in the sky and my, and my app is on her side, but just because... I wanted her standing up. I did flip the picture. So the words are now sideways. But as you can see, and you can't see Mars here. Mars is also in Virgo right next here, next to her knee. So you've got in Virgo today, you have the sun, Mercury. Mercury is now right up here by the sun, the moon and Mars. And this is a very close depiction of what Jesus' birth sky looked like also when he was born. These planets were um, all in Virgo. And Virgo is the woman. And so signifying the body of Christ. 
And so what does this mean to us? Well, I, um, you know, this is, this is like the word of God. It's subject to interpretation, but um, so some people might come up with other meanings or deeper meanings in what we're saying here. I think um, all are correct that nobody's right. Nobody's wrong. It's what, whatever you see in this, but the sun is, I think represents Jesus. And here the sun is right here. She's almost eclipsing her hand, um, which right there, if you know that there's a, there's a star called Spica and Spica is, means the branch and the branch is, is, um, is Jesus. He was the branch and he formed, a. He, he that's another name for him in the word. And so Mercury is the message planet. Even you see, um, you've seen that, that means the message. So this is, it's Mercury is right there next to the sun, carrying the message that Jesus wants to, to put out today in this season through her, through his bride, through the body of Christ. And then also the, this is so significant to me that Mars is right here at the knee. And what comes to mind is that Mars is the warring planet and we war, where do we war on our knees? We are, that's how you battle is in prayer. And so is the moon and the moon represents us, the bride of Christ. So at the knee, of Virgo. So I think that represents us being on our knees in prayer. And it's an invitation to war. We are in a serious battle right now, a very um, serious battle in the heavenlies. And so we need everybody that battles in the spirit to be on their knees battling with the Lord. Um, it's, it's time to get ready. This is, I think the way somebody put it, this is a war call. Um, but yeah, also, what is the meaning of the constellation Virgo? Um, I I depict Virgo as being the woman or the bride, the woman, and as you know, in Revelation, is the bride of Christ or the church, mm -hmm. but not the, the body of Christ. I don't like to say the church. Isn't because, it also like the kingdom builder? Yes, constellation. Yes, the kingdom of God. Yes. Okay, so that's significant. Yes, and also I want to point out too that any any time we see multiple heavenly bodies, whether it's one of the planets or the sun or the moon in one constellation at the same time, that's the Lord, like putting a big loudspeaker or a spotlight saying, pay close attention. Yes. Amen. That doesn't happen all the time where there's four several things happening in the same constellation at the same time. So that's yes. the Lord saying, pay attention. Yes, it's good. I also want to point out that they're, they're mm -hmm. the deccan that the Mars and the moon are in is Butes. And Butes is depicted as a warrior. Um, he has a sickle, which is harvest time. A sickle is for the harvest. And he's guarding the crown. And then Paul says in the word of God that the crown is God's people. So, so here we have Butes. So Mars and the moon are both in Butes. Butez, however you say that. And um, that's that's a place, again, of battle, but it's it's of the harvest, guarding what the Lord has, which we are his inheritance. We are his prized possession. Um, so that's what needs to be guarded. And, and that's about all I have on that. Do you guys have anything else? Um, I was going to mention that uh, the moon moves very quickly around um, the constellations. So yesterday, on the day that the eclipse actually happened, and it was the beginning of uh, first fruits, the beginning of Chesvan actually started around, well, according to Austin time, um, it was um, right around noon, I believe, yesterday, which was right about the time that the eclipse was passing out of the United States, but the moon was in the womb of Virgo. And that was 
uh, Deb was mentioning that this picture of Virgo and where the planets were is very similar to where, to the birth sky of Jesus when he was born. The thing that was different about it is the location of the moon. So if you think about Jesus as the sun and us as the moon, the sun, I mean, the moon was um, was not in the womb of Virgo on the day that Jesus was born, but yesterday it was in the womb. So that that is a new birthing, you know, at the, at the coming of Jesus, it was Jesus being birthed into the earth to begin a new era, to change everything up that had existed on the earth up till that time. So now we see the moon in the womb and that is a birthing of the, the kingdom and a birthing of the bride in the earth. So that is another really significant message. There's no question in my mind that, you know, the reason we saw this eclipse on this particular month, right after the fall feast season is to alert us. It's putting us on high alert that we are truly in this war season to bring forth the kingdom of God and the enemy is doing everything that he can to try to circumvent us being victorious in this season. So that's what I had to add to what, what Deb was saying. And I'm, I'm going to go on. If nobody else has any more comments about Virgo, I'm going to move to some other planets. I just have one more thing to say, actually, about the war and the cry to battle is that we the way we battle is by declarations and by speaking what is not as though it were and so we need to um we don't speak necessarily what you see with your natural eyes you see what the lord is telling you 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 speak what the lord is telling you which may not look like that when you're saying it but that's what you say because that is the battle what do you want to see you want to see the kingdom of god come you want to see the kingdom of god manifest on this earth you want to see the kingdom of god in the seven mountains you this is we want to see the words of God that cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. So these are the types of things that we actually make declare and speak. And the not those, I mean, it's all encompassing. What is it that you're, the Lord is speaking to you? And what do you see in this season um, that you want to go against? So you see something with your eyes, but you speak as if that, what the Lord is saying over it is, is, that is what is, if that makes sense. Amen. Yes, totally. We are walking by faith and not by sight. Yes, amen. Okay. okay. So the next... Um, I'm going to unshare this. Okay. The next one that we're <laughs> going to talk about is um, Ceres, which is not, you know, one of our named planets. But it is, it was in the, it was an asteroid at one time. It is broken apart and it is now counted as the fifth planet in the lineup um, that we consider important when we read birth skies. So Ceres, as I said, is fifth, which five represents the need for grace. And this, um, planet is in the constellation of Libra, which means it's the scales of God. And so the scales represent the sufficiency of Christ's sacrifice and um, the price to be paid. So we're, when we look at Libra, we know that we could not pay the price. If it weren't for what Jesus did for us by dying on the cross, we wouldn't have we wouldn't, we wouldn't survive, but he has paid that price. He has made it possible. And we depend on the grace of God to get us through everything that we face. But his promise to us is that if we will rely on his grace, we will win every battle in the spirit realm. We are already victorious warriors. We are overcomers. We are ones who conquer. And so 
this is a series in this in this uh, line up in the sky is extremely important because if we don't rely on the grace of God, uh, we're going to have a hard time making it in this poor season. But he has got miracles, signs, and wonders for us if we will stick close to him and listen to what he says. The next one, the next planet. That uh, Laura, before you move on, where is Ceres right now? What constellation? Libra. Okay. And... Um, the scripture that came to my mind when I was looking at, at that, of course, is Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will make your path straight. So we are definitely in, in a season where that has got to be um, one of the main scriptures that we rely on. Trusting in him. Uh, the next one is Jupiter. Jupiter is the king planet. It is um, the planet that means reigning in life. In other words, we are meant to rule and reign with Christ in this season. And the, the, um, plant, the constellation that we're in in Jupiter is Aries, which is the sign of the ram. And the ram is standing on Cetus the um, sea monster, or what we would call in spiritual terms, Leviathan. He's the enemy of God. He represents the Antichrist spirit. But Aries, as the risen ram, is standing on his back. He also, uh, Cetus also has a band wrapped around his neck, and it's tied to two fish which are part of Pisces. And the question is, do the two fish have him bound or does see the sea monster have them bound? And the answer to that is really in, it's about us taking our authority. We are one of the fish. The, the body of Christ is one of the fish. The, um, well, there's a lot of different ways that we can look at that, but it's uh, to me that's the picture of the um, Jews and the Gentiles becoming one. And in this picture, um, we want to look at that from that perspective that we have been given authority over the sea monster through the blood and the resurrection of the of the ram, the lamb. And if we don't rise up in our authority then the enemy takes over. So it's really a battle of authority. If we stand in our authority, we are assured of winning because Jesus already won the battle. But he's invited us to step <clears throat> into that level of authority so that we can see that overcoming victory come to us. And I love the fact that we're in um, Jupiter, which again, as I said, is the king planet. Um, it, is, it was a very significant planet on Jesus' birth because we saw the star Regulus um, go into retrograde, which means go backward and then go forward and draw a literal circle around that, that um, star, right? The Regulus? Yes, yes Regulus. So... Um, Jesus is the king, and Amen. he has given us that same authority that he walks in, and we can rise up and win every battle in him. Anyway. So, um, one other thing, I noticed that Venus, right before we went on the call, Venus is in Leo, and what does Leo do? He's a lion, and he roars, and that Venus represents God's passion, so I just think that we are his passion. And that he wants us to, we're not to be quiet during this season, but to roar like a lion. Amen. Okay, and the last, um, the last planet that we're going to look at is Saturn. It's in the seventh position. And Saturn is in Aquarius. Aquarius is the picture of um, 
the man that's pouring out of his jug, pouring out the spirit. And so we both receive and we pour. As we receive, then we pour out to others. So this idea of um, the Holy Spirit being poured out is a very central part of what God is saying to us in this kingdom season. He is pouring out a fresh anointing. And um, I believe that this fresh outpouring is something that we're still in the beginning stages of. Um, it kind of is running through everything that we see going on. It's running through all the feasts from here on out. I believe the whole end time age is is a fresh outpouring with greater and greater um, dimensions of liberty in the Holy Spirit, with greater signs, wonders, and miracles being made available to us as we press in. And so um, we want to really learn how to flow in that new anointing. We want to be constantly aware of the fact that there's a lot that we don't know. There's a lot that we don't understand. But the Lord says he wants to reveal his mysteries to us. And so I, I believe that even us learning how to tap into what's written in the stars and in the sky and through these different events like an eclipse is a very critical part of him revealing greater depth of his mysteries to us. So um, before we launch off into talking a little bit more about that anointing, we want to now focus in on what is the meaning of the eclipse. Um, anybody have any more comments about constellations? Yeah, I do. So this morning as I was doing some review for this, I, I got a little bit of a download here. And... Um, The I was watching a video by Joshua Aaron. I don't know if y'all are familiar with him, but he's an American Israeli worship leader. And he was he did a little quick little live on Facebook yesterday, which was Sabbath. And um he was saying that uh it was the day that they do the um he called it the roll back the scroll where they go back to the, they start reading through Genesis through the first five books and they repeat, well, yesterday, the beginning of this month was happened to also be the day that they started Genesis one again. So it's an, it's another picture of a new beginning. That's awesome. And, and so what I was hearing the Lord say, do you know how often they do that? Do they do it once a year? How often do they start at Genesis again? I, they go through the first, I don't know. I, I don't know. know. They have all the, for people who don't realize the Jews, they read and every, these dates are chosen since antiquity, what mm -hmm. they're going to read on a certain day. So it's always really significant too. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> so <clears throat> what I was hearing the Lord say, is this is the month of new beginnings and Manasseh, the meaning of his name, as Laura mentioned, um, is to forget to, I can't read my own writing. Uh, to leap up and away, which is a putting aside of things behind and leaping into something new. But I heard the Lord say, this is a month of new beginnings. <clears throat> Please excuse my voice. I'm going to try to get through this. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> a shedding of the old to make way for the new. Like a snake skin. Like a snake sheds its skin. To make way for the new skin. And, and there's new wine skins. God is revealing in this time. That there is a new. Message. And this is going to go back with the planets. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just one second. The season for new messages. From heaven. Which is Mercury is the messenger planet. Okay. Um, and we talked about its position in Virgo. 
it's an it's a it's a month of new war strategies, which is there's Mars. Mars is a warrior planet. Got a saying where, you know, um, it's a time of new. We need to be giving. He'll be giving new war strategies this month. Um, new grace for justice and righteousness. As Ceres is in Libra, Libra is a picture of, of justice and scales of justice and righteousness. <clears throat> and in that, I was hearing Amos 5, 11. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. And I believe we're going to begin to see that in Israel and around the world and, and the kingdom this month. To be watching for that, for new grace, for justice and righteousness. <clears throat> it's a time for a new revelation of King Jesus. And this is Jupiter in the kingdom. I was hearing in this, I was hearing Revelation eleven fifteen about the kingdoms of this world becoming the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. And we talked about Jupiter being the king planet and its position um, <clears throat> this month. Um, Okay, there's two more. Saturn being an Aquarius. Hold on, I want to go back to that. Okay, Jupiter being an Aries. What's, what's going to cat the catalyst for the kingdoms of this world becoming the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ? Is the sons and daughters of God stepping into their authority? That is the catalyst. And that's why it is so important for us to understand who we are and what we carry um, <clears throat> for that justice and righteousness and that revelation of King Jesus as king, as the one true king, and for his kingdom to begin to reign in the earth. Um, going on to Saturn. Being an Aquarius, <clears throat> Saturn is the seventh planet, which is a picture of Shabbat or Sabbath or rest. So I heard the Lord say there's a new anointing coming. As you were talking, Laura, about uh, the pouring forth of the anointing, receiving and giving what you've received, we give. There's new anointings. There's also, I believe the Lord wants to give a new revelation of his rest. And what that looks like, even in times of war, even in times of upheaval, even in times of a lot of activity, his rest is still present and important. <clears throat> and he was giving you revelations of what that looks like. And then Venus, as Deb was mentioning, is in Leo. And you were talking about this as a time to not be silent and to to roar and what i'm seeing in that is that judah <clears throat> leo represents the line of the tribe of judah okay the gaza strip which is the war zone right now is in the territory that god gave to judah back in the old testament when he gave the promised land to Abraham and promised it to his children and to his descendants, when they came into the promised land, Judah's territory included the Gaza Strip that is now a war zone. And what I'm hearing the Lord say is that it's time he's going to begin to give a new hope for victory. A new hope for victory. Not just in Israel, not just for that area, but in the kingdom and for his people that... If we will pay attention and if we will listen for his voice, there is a new hope for victory, no matter what the days and weeks and months ahead look like. No matter how dark things may look, the Lord is wanting to, to give a new hope for victory so that as the line of the tribe of Judah is roaring over the nations, his body is rising up and roaring in victory. And you know, the lion is. They call him the king of the jungle. And when that lion roars in the natural, there is 
something that almost strikes a fear or a pay attention. It's like a holy reverence, you know what I'm saying? And other creatures, like they know the king is speaking. They know the one with the authority is on the scene. And, and you can hear that in the roar of a lion. Amen. And so we, as we enter into this new month, this eighth month, this new beginning month, I just hear the Lord saying, again, new hope for victory, new grace, new rest, new revelation, all these different things that we went over. And it's all depicted right there in the stars and where those planets are aligned right now in these constellations. It's right there. Good. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think we get a lot of information and a lot of stuff being thrown at us. We have a lot of noise coming at us from the world, but we have to remember like what's going on in the, in the kingdom realm. And we just came through the fall feast season in the, the seventh month. It's a time, it was a time of completion and a time of stepping into another new year. You know, it was a time to pay attention, to listen to the Lord, to rejoice over the harvest of the last season and anticipate what's coming in the coming year. You know, it's a time that, you know, they're, they're rejoicing over their harvest. But they're also thinking, they're already thinking about how am I going to plant for the next year? So the very first day of the next month is when this war began. It right. was the day after the Sabbath and the fall feast. The eight, yeah, day eight. Yeah, so, so it's so significant now on the first of the new moon the new month of uh, the new moon of the next month the eighth month the lord is now telling us through these pictures in the sky and he's highlighting it with an eclipse that i want you to really pay attention forget what's behind you know forget any any models any um, preconceived notions, any things that the way you did them before. And you've got to adjust to the way things are going to be going forward. And he's been preparing us. You know, this is already now the fourth year. It's the beginning of the fourth year in a new um, decade of the 80s, 5784. Next year will be 2024, which is another governmental year. If we look back to what was happening in 2012, you know, we can see certain things that the Lord was doing to prepare us. But now we've come, we're coming through and we're just ending another transition into a new government. And that is in place now it's in play and so it's really exciting and when we see war come we should in no way be alarmed by our adversary he is just a defeated foe as far as we're concerned our king has already won okay I can't hear you rachel i want to point out too that this eclipse yesterday wasn't any eclipse. It was called the Ring of Fire eclipse. Okay, and they don't they don't put that name on everyone. It's a it's a certain type. And that just reminded me of Zechariah <clears throat> 2 5. And he's talking about Jerusalem. But I declare the Lord, declares the Lord, will be I myself will be a wall of fire to her on all sides and i will be the glory in her midst amen Please. that's the eclipse that we saw yesterday yep that brings up so when i was watching these eclipse so what i saw in this was mm -hmm. so so you know i started watching the eclipse pretty early on in it so i watched them with my special glasses not so i watched the moon just barely move over 
and then it came to as full as we could see it here. But what I was seeing, you know, is that we were coming. So if the sun represents Jesus and the moon represents us, we're coming into alignment with him as this is happening. But with the naked eye, all you see is the light. You, I took a picture with my phone of the eclipse without the glasses, just the, and it looks just like the sun, even on the pit. It's this, you, there's, you don't see the moon, you just see the light. And then, and so we're in full alignment with the Lord. We're just reflecting his light. But, and, but I noticed that the light cast a certain ambiance on the earth as well. And, you know, there were some construction workers across my yard and I heard them say, what is that? What is that? You know, they, you could tell they were looking at the light. And one of them goes, I don't know. I think there's an eclipse and they were working out there. And um, I thought that was kind of funny, but that's, you could see, you could see this lighting. And so, you know, it says that in the word that rise and shine for the glory of God is upon you. We are going to reflect his light and the earth is going to look different because of the people of God on it. And I think that that was, uh, that was something that, that I didn't really even see before until I watched the clips and I just watched the moon come into alignment with it. And the sun, the sun is still gave its light, but it, it, we were, the moon is enveloped in that light without your special glasses. You can't see, you can't see the, um, the, you can't see the eclipse, right? Yeah. It's pretty spectacular. Yeah. And what's cool about that is that even though it, if, if you didn't know that the eclipse was going on and you noticed the shift in lighting, you noticed that it did get a little bit dimmer, but it didn't out, you know, it didn't take over. The light and like right. you're saying you you wouldn't even really know there's a subtle shift so the darkness that we see on the earth is just like that in from god's perspective you know this darkness is trying to come in and take over the kingdom but it can't steal the light and it, so it may get a little bit dimmer there's still battle going on the light always triumphs and so that is such a beautiful thing we are prevailing yes um, one of the other things that that i saw is that um while the moon comes into this alignment with the sun it's us coming into alignment as the bride with her bridegroom and the ceiling the ring of fire is like uh, a ring it's like an engagement ring it's the ceiling of, and, and I'm using the word S-E-A-L-I-N-G. It's a ceiling of us in him and, and our marriage to him. It, it's not consummated yet because that's what the whole fall feast season represents. It's this picture that we are rehearsing, rehearsing, rehearsing every year until Jesus actually returns to take us to our heavenly home with him. But in the meantime, we are betrothed and we do have a ring on our finger that is the covenant of the Lord with us. For who else, whosoever chooses to be part of his bride. And so we have a very high calling and he has sealed us for the day of redemption. He has sealed us with the protection of under his wing. He has made us able and anointed us with everything that we need to live through the season with, with a victorious outcome. So I think that is, you know, really exciting as well, because God's saying, look up. Yes. Keep your eyes on what I'm doing. So Amen. to abandon things of the past and we really have to be ready to step into some new things no matter how uncomfortable they are knowing that we have the anointing and the authority to 
to go forward in that and be victorious. So let's, um, a couple more highlights about the eclipse itself. The eclipse entered the United States in Eugene, Oregon. Eugene is a word that means good seed. And it exited the United States in Corpus Christi, which means body of Christ. So this particular eclipse was seen through nine states in that path from Oregon to Texas. The message for us, I believe, in America, because that's where we're seeing it, is this one of, um, it's to the body of Christ. In other places that saw the, the eclipse happen, it may be a slightly different message, depending on where it hits in their nations or in their, um, you know, what you can see in the sky from their vantage point. But that is the message to us as America. And um, there's another eclipse coming in April next year, which will fall right after, after um, Passover. So there, these things are tied to the feasts for a reason, you know? So we always want to be mindful of that. And you know, the eclipse that happens next spring will be, I believe it's a full eclipse. This one wasn't because the moon is at its farthest point from the earth. So it's smaller and it still allows us to see part of the sun. But next year it will be in the position of being closer to the earth and it will fully eclipse the sun. Um, Anybody else want to say something about that? Deb, you want to talk about the comet? Oh, yeah. So the comet happened um, a month ago today, yesterday. So it was on September 14th. Well, it takes days, but specifically, well, actually a lot longer than days. I'm talking about the time that it came into Virgo. <laughs> so last month, a month ago today, the comet came into Virgo, which was the beginning of the um what Fisher which and the fall feast the trumpet so what was significant significant and we discussed this last month but i just think in light of today or yesterday with the eclipse so you have 30 days later you have the eclipse after the comet the comet's name was nishimura which actually means child and this comet went straight through the birth, the the birth, the womb of Virgo, just like the just like the the moon. So, um, so I just feel like you. So in this season, we have the bookends of they're not even they're probably of, of these signs in the heavens during this. It just highlighted the fall fest feast season, I think. And now we're going on into what God is doing. And the season, I just represents, we're talking about the rest. Rachel was talking about the rest and, and Saturn. The season is a, is a time of resting in the Lord and pressing in and, and knowing him. And, and um, he's just, he's speaking to us through the heavens, like he said he would. And to under, know and understand what he's saying, just press into him, rest in him because we're coming into a season of battle and you know the scripture that says that you're going to see these you're going to see things with your eyes but they're not going to affect your spirit the word of god says that how can that be how can that be when you see atrocities of war and it doesn't affect your spirit is only to have that oneness and that communication with the lord that he's got this and and um you won't have any fear and so that's what I think this whole season is highlighting, starting with what the Lord is birthing in us and, and his, him showing signs of that all the way through to now. So I don't know where the comet is yet, but we can't see it when we could. So the comet traveled, you, you know, comets take, a I don't know how long that you can see it, but it was only visible the significant part of it being in Virgo on that 
on those dates is that it was only, it's only visible by the naked eye for like a couple of days. And so that's where it was when you could see it with the naked eye. The rest of the time it is approaching and um, leaving our space, you couldn't see it with the naked eye. Amen. Okay, so that is um, a quick view at what we saw and what we're experiencing right now. Um, I want to easily transition from this conversation into a little bit more about um, the month of Messiah and Messiah, of course, meaning Christ anointing, the month of anointing. So we've just finished talking about how the Lord is pouring out his spirit. Um, I also want to just mention that Saturn, Jupiter and Saturn are both you know, they're far out in the orbit. So when we talk about what's going on in those planets, um, they're, they're more long-term. You know, Jupiter, it, it one constellation, it, it stays in one constellation for a whole year. Saturn is for two years. So Saturn being in Aquarius, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is, um, you know, it, it's a, it's a process is what I'm saying. Like it's not something that just goes really quickly like the moon constantly giving us a new message. But this anointing of the Holy Spirit is something that the Lord continues to do. And he's saying in this month, um, you know, we need to step up in our, um, he's pouring out more. So we have, the capacity to receive more. And while you may not really understand how that works, like I'm not saying that I understand how that works, but if the Lord says it, then I believe it. And I'm saying, give me greater capacity so that my heart can take in more of what you want to pour out in me. And therefore I can pour out more for others. So there's this need to be to step up in our level of discernment because as we know and we've talked about many times you know there's lies all around us there's deception all around us there's witchcraft all around us we've got to be wise to the time and there's no way to do that except by the spirit of god our intellects will not carry us in this season so if there's things you know like um, when you're reading the word and the Lord gives you revelation about something, you know, we've all received a revelation at a certain level, but if the Lord's going to ramp that up and he's going to give us greater revelation, then we need to make sure that what gets poured into us goes from just oh, yes, I see something with my eyes, but I don't have complete understanding in my heart yet. And so we process that with the Lord. We press in through prayer. We trust the anointing of God. We fast and, and pray until we get understanding. And when you get understanding, then your power level goes up to be able to operate in that revelation and in that anointing. So, you know, <laughs> we all know that there's so many things that the Lord has for us that we have not experienced yet. One that, you know, I am contending for, we talk about it quite a lot amongst the three of us, is that ability to be transported somewhere else. To yeah. Be transported in the spirit mm -hmm. You know, when God says, you're, I'm going to take you on an assignment, you know, to the other side of the earth, we're not buying a plane ticket. He's taking us there. And we, we just find ourselves in this place. We do our assignment and we come back. And I know many people have experienced that already, but I certainly have it. And I want to, you know, so... Think about the things that the Lord is speaking and what he's put on your heart and contend for them in prayer and fasting. Receive the new that he's pouring out and, you know, 
see how far he's going to take us in this new season. Hmm. Amen. Anything else on there? Mm -hmm. I think we covered it now. Okay, well, there's just one more piece then that I'm going to bring up and we'll, we'll make this short because I think this is probably um, a subject that we could spend a whole broadcast on. But I'm going to mention that this is also the month of the flood. This is the month that Noah went into the ark with his family and God said, I'm bringing judgment on the earth. And he built the ark. He told Noah exactly what to do. Noah had to have the Holy Spirit, even though the Holy Spirit hadn't been poured out. At that time, God gave him the anointing that he needed to be able to build an ark, a place of safety and a place of covenant, so that he and his family would survive the coming judgment. So... I think it's pretty obvious to see how that relates to where we are today. You know, we're, God is in a season of judging the earth and he promised that he would never wipe out the earth again. We have his promise through the rainbow, but he is ready to deal a blow to that antichrist spirit that has been operating against us as his people against the Jews and those that believe in the name of Jesus, the promise that he's given us, the promised land that he's given us, and every good gift that he's given us through the covenant written in his blood when Jesus died on the cross. So he's already made that covenant and he's given us this place of safety in the ark. So while we are going through judgments in the earth, we want to first remember that we have a place of safety to always live in and a place of rest, a place of provision, that there was nothing lacking for Noah and his family in that time. And we also want to remember that, you know, it's because of the covenant that we have protection. We're going to face some difficult things, I'm quite sure. I think we're going to see some things on American soil that we haven't seen before. But I'm not saying that to be in fear about it. I'm saying it because we want to know that we've been given that position of authority and safety and rest in Christ. And what is the enemy most afraid of? He's afraid of us living in the promise that Jesus gave us because that eradicates him off the planet. It takes away his, you know, his notion that he's going to take back what, you know, was given to us as the children of God. But just like we see that sea monster being bound and us being the ones in authority, the enemy has already been defeated. And all he can do is rage against the people that belong to the Lord and try to shout at us really loud, just like Goliath did, <clears throat> <laughs> that we're not going to win. But that's a lie. It's a lie. And we are standing on the head of our enemy and we are going to see his head cut off. And we have to believe that. We have to encourage one another and we have to um, look at during this month of the flood, what is God doing and how is he moving and stick with him, stick close by him. There's a reason why um, this flood started in the month of Chesvan on the 17th of Chesvan and, it, and he, Noah comes to rest one year and 10 days later on mm -hmm. Mount Ararat. Mm -hmm. I want revelation on that time period too. Mm -hmm. Both in the month of Cheshvan, in the yes. same month. And if there is ever a picture of new beginnings, that is it. Yeah. And 
Noah's name means rest or comfort. Yeah. Come on. That's his name. Yeah. <laughs> so, so God puts him, he, his obedience to the Lord, his heart before the Lord, his, what's the word I'm looking for? <clears throat> His righteousness before the Lord is what saved his family. Okay. And he his obedience to building this ark when everybody thought he was nuts, you know, for what was it, a hundred something years it took him to build it? You know, crazy amount of time. And he just kept building, kept hammering away, kept cutting down trees, kept, you know, putting things together. <coughs> And God takes rest and comfort, puts him in the ark, and says, I've got this. Shut, the Lord shut the door to the ark. No, it didn't. It up. The Lord it himself it sealed it. Okay. <laughs> the Lord took care of business out here while rest and comfort resided within the ark. Amen. So when we find ourselves in a position or a place of all the noise that's coming that we hear and not just from the media i'm talking about from pulpits okay from all these voices about fear 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 beware beware da, 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 da. shut it down shut it down. that is not the voice of the lord i'm gonna say it again that is not the voice of the lord okay his voice brings rest and comfort in the ark and protects his people Amen. And then the Lord opened the door. Yeah. And where was it that the Lord opened the door? It was on Mount Ararat, which means the curse is reversed. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. That's all part of this month. You know, that's all part of this month that we're in. It's so beautiful. Um, and, you know, just bringing this back to exactly where we're at in the earth right now, mm -hmm. um, I also think it's, it's very important that we are careful about who we're pointing fingers at, who are we accusing. Mm -hmm. The world is not what it seems. That's right. We've been told a bunch of lies. Mm -hmm. There's been all kinds of false, false accusations against people. People in leadership positions mm -hmm. that uh, we've been told lies about and believe them our whole life. Mm -hmm. You know, so you might be surprised in days ahead to find out that who you thought was a good guy was really a bad guy, and who you thought was a bad guy was really a good guy. Who's and in the middle, you get people who are who are are preaching and prophesying and spreading things that are wrong because that's what they genuinely believe that's what they were taught they themselves don't have an evil wicked heart they they're just believe what they were told and spread it yeah you know so you've got that made in the mix too yeah so it makes us like the word of the lord to us is mm -hmm. just because you heard it from mm -hmm. the pulpit or from some scholar or expert. Some, you know, professional opinion Expert. doesn't mean mm -hmm. that it's true. Come on. It's just what you've been told. So how do we know what's true and how do we know what to do? Unless we press in and hear fresh mm -hmm. revelation and go back to the word. Everything that we need to know is in the word of God. And mm -hmm. if we don't test the spirits against the word of God to find out that we are speaking and walking in truth, we will not prosper. Mm -hmm. We are in a dangerous place if we don't go back to the word and trust the Holy Spirit to enlighten mm -hmm. what we need. The stuff that's in here and how relevant it can be to your life is astonishing. It's absolutely astonishing. You might think, well, the word's never going to speak to me about this problem that I face or that problem that I face. Try God. Mm -hmm. You know, give him a chance. 
ask him questions and let him lead you to the place in the word where God's going to highlight a certain scripture and you're going to go, wow, I never knew that was addressed in the word. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's, he's amazing. He's amazing. Well, I'm so glad you brought that up because yesterday I was watching um, a, uh, well, I was in the room when somebody else was watching a <laughs> conservative news outlet and or I guess it was yesterday or the day before, and he had two high-level ranking U.S. military personnel on, and they were both saying that they are talking about the situation in Israel, that, that IDF is not equipped or trained, this is, get this, it's not trained for urban warfare. So they were saying these guys are going into a situation where they're not equipped and they're not trained. And in my gut, I was like, that cannot be right. That cannot be right. I know that's not true. The very next guest that comes on is a former Navy SEAL. First thing out of his mouth is, I have to disagree with your former two guests. (laughs) Because I was in training with these people and they are very well equipped and trained for what they're stepping into. So just because somebody is an expert or and it, I don't know if these guys were lying or because they just didn't know. They believed what they were told. Same thing. That is a perfect example. Uh, we cannot believe everything we hear. Yeah. I don't care whose name is in front of it or whose voice is, 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 is coming out of, whose mouth it's coming out of. We have to walk in discernment and hear the Lord and things, let the spirit bear witness to what is true and what is not. And if it's not, kick it out. Don't you go bringing that into your home and into your spirit and believe in that crap. Yeah. Okay. We have to hear the Lord, the voice of the Lord for ourselves. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. They know my voice. We have to know his voice. Bottom line. That's right. Now more than ever. Amen. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, if we are finished then, let's um, move to the offering and our closing prayer. Okay, so if you have an offering prepared, we give, we we uh, just like to hold up an offering at the end of this. This can be, it's not a, it's not a tithe. It's not any amount. It's whatever your heart it is a first fruits offering to give to the Lord the, your first and your best. It is our tradition. And as the Bible says, we wave that before the Lord. And, um, and we just say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing in our lives and that you're preparing us for and that you're speaking to us, Lord. And I just pray that everybody that's on this call and heard these words today will take these words and and heed them to press closer into you, that their spirits will be drawn to you in a greater way. If And they you will reveal truth, that, that the Holy Spirit is leads us into all truth and around us are so many lies and so much deception Mm -hmm. coming out of the box in the living room, coming out of the box in our cars, Lord, but you are the revealer of truth so that we will press into you and hear the words from on high in the name of Yeshua. Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, also one more thing is so important for this call. Lord, we lift up Israel. We lift up the citizens of Israel. And and like we said, we don't, I don't pretend to know. Um, I have suspicions about what is actually happening over there. But I do know that people are being harmed. Your innocent people that have nothing to do with it. So Lord, so we pray for the protection of the people that are being harmed. And in the in Israel, the apple of your eye, Lord, the place that you walked, that you loved, Lord, we pray for your people over there. We pray for their safety. We pray for angels to intervene. We pray for the peace of Israel in the name of Yeshua. Yes, Lord. And I just also want to say that 
God, you're so great. You're so amazing. And what the enemy means for evil, you turn it for good. We know that there have been many significant events that if we we understand how those things happened and who was the one who wrote the law to bring it into, into manifestation in the earth, we would say it doesn't really even make sense. Like that was part of God's plan. How did this person representing the other side, you know, how were they used to bring this thing into effect? But you, that's what you do, God. You take the enemy's plans and you turn them for good. And you establish the state of Israel for your purposes, even though other people brought it into manifestation who had a different purpose. Mm -hmm. So we just thank you for that. And we thank you that the same is happening today. We thank you that your plan for Israel still stands. We thank you that every word in the Bible that you wrote about Israel being your firstborn and that land being your land is still true. And we stand with you, God. We stand and cry out to you as you tell us to in your word and say that we will give you no rest until we see Jerusalem made a praise in all the earth. No matter what's going to happen in days ahead, we have joined our hearts with yours concerning your people and your mm -hmm. land. And we just thank you for that, Lord. We thank you that you protect us in that process. Mm -hmm. And we, we thank you for your protection that you extend over all the peoples of the earth that belong to you, Lord. Because every nation has something similar to what's going on in Israel. Every nation is, is experiencing oppression from evil forces. Every nation people is experiencing a, an, an attempted enslavement. We've been living as slaves for hundreds and hundreds of years without even knowing that. But we thank you that you are setting captives free, God. And we stand with you in that as well. We bless your holy name. Amen. Amen. Um, okay, so. We thank you so much for joining us today. Um, this has been our first group and Eclipse phone call for uh, the month of Chespan and 5784, getting off to a wild start. <laughs> and um, we look forward to meeting with you again next month. We'll see what the Lord's going to do during this exciting time. We pray that you've gotten some fresh revelation and uh, some good stuff to chew on for this coming month. So we bless everyone who's joined us both here live as well as uh, that will listen to us in the days to come. And we'll see you next month. Thank you. Amen. How are you?